Hi guys, it is January 8, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for linking below to this video. I watched it, it was hard. I identify with this woman. I'm going to play just a few minutes. My name is Honorable Mary Alyssa Bullock. I'm from San Diego, California. I'm a retired federal civil rights judge for the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Good evening. Um, I am a retired federal civil rights judge for the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Most people think of a judge as wearing a black robe or a black suit. Well, that I did. But my background is quite diverse. I was a violently sexually abused child for 10 plus years. Then I had my own growing up to do. I eventually went off to the University of San Diego College for Women, where I majored in philosophy and English and political science. And then I went to law school and also received an MBA. Um, I was born in a very poor, poor family. I was the oldest of five children, and my father was the abuser. So he not only abused me, but he sold me. So if you think back on it, I come from where I come from. To be a federal judge means that I had the vision to want to do the right thing, to help other people make the world a better place, to disenfranchise, dispossess, and disillusion. That's been my only dream and my dream today is to make the world a better place. I tried to do that as a judge, but I found the system does not encourage, honor, um, public service. As a matter of fact, it it's a system that basically goes for the base need of corruption, greed, money, power, um, any way you can get it. And when it's a fight between yourself and the bureaucracy, bureaucracy always wins. They will set out a plan for your short-term and long-term demise, and they will go after you until you are no longer the person you used to be. It's a train wreck waiting to happen. No longer no. You. the person you used to be. Train wreck waiting to happen. Good people get destroyed every single day, and I am really profoundly sick of hearing from people. No one can destroy you. If they destroy you, you allow them to destroy you. You make your own reality, so therefore the circumstances that you find yourself in were brought about by you. You didn't think positively enough. Whatever. People do destroy people's lives. And having to live that is very, very difficult to bear. What they did to this woman, I, I don't, you know, words like unconscionable come to mind. No. It is so disgustingly immoral how so many people behave and how they actually get support for destroying other people's lives. So I will link below. You can listen to this woman's story. It is quite something, but... Um, she has lupus, she has MS. She was called out of the hospital after surgery to come to a meeting with, I think, the other judges of the EEOC in California where she was working. And they asked her to change a decision, a discrimination case that she had ruled on the side of the two women who brought the case against the SEC, the Security Exchange Commission. She ruled in favor of these two women, lawyers at the SEC, of Asian 
uh, dissent, the, it was a discrimination case. National origin. I was an employment discrimination attorney. One of the reasons why I had a really hard time listening to this is because I was destroyed by medication put on the market, but I have to tell you, my seven years when I was just starting out as an attorney, I'm Every day I think about what happened, what the hell happened to my life. It got so thoroughly destroyed. And like this woman, yes, you know, it's hard to say this because so many people just roll their eyes or make fun of you or react in a way like, oh, wow, so you really care, huh? Yeah. I became an employment discrimination attorney not for corporations, but for the plaintiff. And I really did want to I wanted to fight for them to have them receive justice, but very soon afterwards I realized that there was none, and that's exactly what this former federal civil rights judge states, but she talks about the corruption and the details of the corruption. You've got to listen to this. It's really, look, I have been saying for years, our courts have been taken over. I have said absolutely 100% have our federal courts been taken over. And this is not to say that every judge is corrupt. But unfortunately, in the federal court system, well, there are few and far between who are like this woman about justice and about truth. But even our state courts have been taken over. The greed the psychopathy, it is a contagious disease that now we've got so many people who are either psychopathic clinically, pathologically, or they have that secondary psychopathy. They behave like psychopaths and everybody is about themselves. And I'm sorry, that is absolutely the truth that has manifested here in this country. I'm also going to link below to this video that I did not watch. I just watched three minutes of it, but somebody linked to this below. The federal judiciary is pure fraud. It's pure fraud. So when people you know, suggest to me, well, you're an attorney. First of all, I ended my practice. I could no longer practice. I can't work. I held on to my license for years, paying those dues, and then went inactive, paid $50 for the inactive license, and then realized that I would never, I could never go back. I had been out. I had been standing on the outside looking in for too long and I, I knew I could not go back into that profession because I saw how corrupt it was. How sick it is. The attorneys and judges and all about power and money and the arrogance is so profoundly thick it's a really diseased profession. So Judge Bullock, which is this woman right here, here are some of the quotes that she speaks in that video. 
when it's a fight between yourself and the bureaucracy, bureaucracy always wins. They will set out a plan for your short-term and long-term demise, and they'll go after you until you're no longer the person you used to be. It's a train wreck waiting to happen. It's worse than death. These judges are psychopaths. They operate on the pain and pleasure principle. They don't do anything unless they have a gain in it. By the way, I'm sorry. Um, my memory is bad. Did I mention that she was pulled out of the hospital, transported to this meeting in an ambulance, asked, asked to reverse her decision, to rewrite her decision, and she refused? Did I tell you that they submitted, without her knowing, a rewritten decision and then made her out to be crazy and then had years and years and years of a case herself against the EEOC that they continually prolonged because of her illness hoping that she would die. The tactics attorneys and judges play. Prolonging cases, hoping that people will give up. It's disgusting what happens. It's not about justice. So it's worse than death. Yes, the judges, they operate on the pain and pleasure principle. They don't do anything unless they have a gain in it. And they will do anything they can to inflict pain, if it means gain. And they're not kidding. They are so far removed from the individual. And they realize the consequences from their act are the intended consequences of destroying a perfectly decent, kind, loving human being. And they do it anyway. In California, it's extremely bad. Look at what they do. It's vicious. It's horrible. And people will scream for a relief to be able to do the right thing. And they shut them up in the only way they know how to make their lives a living hell. And they do. The malignant narcissists. You don't have to be a judge. You can be a mother and do that to your own child. The unfortunate thing is there is no justice. We see it on TV and we think there is, but the reality is from all those who have sought justice, the number of those that have been denied is unfortunately more than 90%. Attorneys play golf with judges. It's a very close-knit family. Judges throw cases for attorneys. Family law, it's supposed to be about what's in the best interest of the child. And then you get into the politics. I have to say it's the politics that control the bench. Who knows who's attorney? Who is sitting on the bench? Who contributes to what fund? The government agencies do not have your interest at heart. When your child is taken from you, they must stamp your soul seared it into your heart. You're a bad person, bad parent, bad human being, when that's not the case. You can be a very bad judge, and there are very bad judges out there, but you gave a very large campaign contribution, so you got your judgeship. People cannot afford to pay for lawyers, and I'm afraid that less than 1% of pro se litigants win Zero. It's set up for people to be prosecuted and persecuted. It's not set up the other way. So the State Bar of California can't get much information about Mary Elizabeth Bullock except that she is not eligible to practice, not eligible to practice, not eligible to practice. She also wrote a book, Judging Me. 
This inspiring memoir describes a hard-won life of achievement in the face of overwhelming adversary. Mary Elizabeth Bullock makes her name as an experienced trial litigator, respected business law professor, a federal civil rights judge. She found brilliant success in spite of being blind and being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and systemic lupus, and despite having enduring a childhood poisoned by unspeakable abuse. So the interview was given by um, a man named William Windsor, and he was in the process of doing a documentary about how corrupt our court system court system is and you can go to lawless in America or lawless America and you'll see this man has a tremendous amount of videos on this channel with all of these people who have been screwed by our court system And there's a lot of them. So, here, Lawless America movie trailer. case of judicial corruption is unfolding in Pennsylvania. A state district judge in Las Cruces has been indicted on bribery charges. Mark Chivarella and Michael Conahan were convicted of receiving kickbacks for more than $2 million. Monday's arrest of Guadalupe County Judge Michael Wiggins has sent shockwaves through the city of Cebu. Well, the special prosecutor in this case was hoping today's hearing would end with Judge Michael Murphy in handcuffs. Frequently there were no lawyers. Frequently you were called before you were found guilty. What the sentence was going to be. There are also claims he solicited bribes for Richardson from applicants for other judgeships. Payments were made to the judges, it is alleged, in return for discretionary acts by the judges favoring these businesses. The judges could face at least seven years in federal prison. Yes, people's lives do get destroyed by people who are just so psychopathic and narcissistic, so immoral, so only caring about money and their own comfortable lives. Bill Windsor, charged with crimes in landmark case that voids freedom of speech in Montana. I will link below to these articles. Bill Windsor said the most corrupt state is Montana, which is surprising to me. Um, Bill Windsor is a senior citizen who has never been arrested and who has never committed a crime. And guess what? He was arrested. They did everything to make sure that this movie was not going to come out. So, if you don't know the story of Bill Windsor's illegal incarceration, here you can read what took place, but the charges were <laughs> tweeting, yeah. Filmmaker Bill Windsor has been in the process of producing a film called Lawless America since 2005. It's a film project which exposes the corruption in the American judicial system. He currently has over 1,200 videos on Lawless America, his YouTube channel. Testimony, testimonials 
from American citizens who have experienced corruption in the judicial system firsthand. So he was detained in Texas in October 2014, held in jail for 50 days before being released in December of 2014, 66 years old, claims this is the first time he has ever been arrested and detained, and previously he had never been charged with any crime. After being released from jail in Texas, he started a road trip and blogged twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, to let everyone know he was still free. The blog post stopped on February 19th. He was incarcerated in Ada County Jail in Boise, Idaho on February 19th. He was being held on a $4.1 million bond. He was, a, look, you can read everything that this man had done. Magazine publisher for 30 years, publisher or president or vice president of 100 magazines, trade show conference producer for 30 years, speaker at conferences, lectured at major universities, author of hundreds of articles, books, manuals, conferences, 92 to 96, he was the president of Adventstar Expositions, a company owned by the, by, at the time, by Goldman Sachs. He was the CEO of First Communications from 96 to 2001, which was a company owned by Bain Capital. It wasn't Bain Capital um, Romney's company? It goes on. It goes on. So, yeah, people are taken down all the time. People are destroyed all the time. Well-known fact that the U.S. government is engaged in cyber stalking and cyber spying Glenn Greenwald, 2014, a journalist, constitutional lawyer, commentator, author of three New York Times best-selling books on politics and law, published a series of articles on how covert government agents infiltrate the Internet to manipulate, deceive, destroy reputations. The NSA attempt to control, infiltrate, manipulate, and warp online discourse. And in doing so, compromise the integrity of the internet itself. We all face it every day on the internet. All of these trolls, all of these people spouting their lies. So part of the tactics of the program to inject all sorts of false material onto the internet in order to destroy the reputation of its targets to use social sciences and other techniques to manipulate online discourse and activism to generate outcomes it considers desirable. To see how extremist these programs are, just consider the tactics they boast of using to achieve those ends. False flag operations, posting material to the internet and falsely attributing it to someone else, fake victim blog posts pretending to be a victim of the individual whose reputation they want to destroy, and posting negative information on various forums. And the people who do this are so unbelievably sick. I, I Targets extend far beyond the customary roster of normal spycraft, which is the hostile nations, their leaders, military agencies. They do it. They do it, actually, to people who are just solidly good and really do want to change the world for the better. They stop them dead in their tracks. They, and they don't stop 
until the person is silenced. We all know that this is going on. Obama, his administration, were open using such techniques. I'll link below to all of these articles. But um, I think it's this article that gives an awful lot of information, court documents, regarding the crimes, which were essentially the crime of writing articles, tweeting, free speech. That was committed by William Windsor. My God. Yeah, that required a $4.1 million bond, right? So Lawless in America, I guess it's out. I haven't found it anywhere free to watch. If anybody knows where it is, it apparently, I guess, just came out this year. Lawless America, the movie, is all about exposing the fact that we now live in lawless America. No, we've been living in lawless America for decades. It's only gotten so much worse. We no longer have laws that are enforced because judges do whatever they want to do. America. America has also become lawless because government officials are dishonest and or corrupt. The movie will expose corruption in every state. Corrupt judges, corrupt government officials, and it's not just the judges. You've got corrupt attorneys, whether they're prosecutors or um, public defenders, that destroy people's lives. It's very upsetting. It's really very upsetting. And um, I went into that profession because I really did. Want to be part of justice. Wanted to advocate and represent those who were either fired or demoted or whatever due to injustice I wanted to right the wrong for them you can't you can't in a system where the only writing of the wrong is monetary compensation but you can't in our legal system because it the court system everything is so it's gotten so bad so when people have asked me why don't you file a lawsuit I don't think that they understand that our every institution has been so thoroughly corrupted that Seeking recourse through the court system? If you filed a, a lawsuit, geoengineering, it would be dismissed. It could be dismissed based on national security secrets. You can't go up against any corporations anymore. We've become a fascist nation. We are not the United States of America. Not the one 
that we all grew up in. It's gone. Yeah, it, it still has the actors that pretend like this is the United States of America, and the actors are in Washington, D.C. The actors are in the White House, in Congress, Supreme Court. But we were taken over a long time ago. When corporations merge with government, you live in a fascist state. And yeah, this breaks my heart. <laughs> Not so much for me, but what, what we are leaving the younger generations something so dark and despicable. The opportunities that we had growing up, how life was just a couple of decades ago, it's gone. It's gone. And yeah, I do believe that it was our responsibility to leave the world a better place.